now that we have covered what a solution is and some of the key terms related to solution, let's talk some more about how dissolving occurs. All right, so we're going to, again, add a little bit more vocabulary, but we're going to focus on, you know, what factors affect either how much of a solute we can dissolve or how quickly we can dissolve it. So this is pulled right out of your reading materials. All right, so dissolution is the vocab term for breaking up of a solute in a solvent. All right, so this is the vocabulary word for dissolving. All right, another key thing you want to be familiar with, this process of dissolving centers around the idea of collision theory. All right, and I mean, you hear that, the word collision, that should make you think of something. But the idea here is, is that when dissolving occurs, solute and solvent particles must collide. All right. If they never interact with each other, dissolving won't happen. All right. So solute must collide with solvent to get dissolving. All right. This ties into a lot of things. This is going to help us decide how fast we can get dissolving to happen. It'll also have some impacts on, you know, how much we can get to dissolve. So just kind of a diagram here. We've got our water molecules. That's these guys. And you can see that if this was a KCl salt, all right, you can see that, you know, the water molecules are coming in, they are hitting the outside of the salt and kind of popping off the chlorine and potassium ions. All right, so again, the collisions have to occur. Those are going to occur on the outside first. That is what causes dissolving to happen. So, using this idea of collision theory, there's many ways that we can speed up dissolving, all right? Ultimately, whatever we do, we have to increase those number of collisions, all right? If we increase the collisions, dissolving will happen faster because in order to get dissolving to happen, the solute and solvent molecules have to collide. So surface area is a biggie as far as getting dissolving to happen faster all right because if you look at these pictures here we've got a big chunk all right so this is a chunk of solute the green stuff all right and down here we've got pieces of solute so only the outside molecules are going to be available to bump with our solvent, all right? So in the center of a big chunk of solute, you've got a whole bunch of molecules that can't even get to the solvent particles to actually collide. Whereas when you have a broken up piece of solute, you have much more molecules that are actually on the outside and able to hit and collide with the solvent, all right? So this, what you do when you break something up into smaller pieces, you increase the amount of surface area. All right. So more surface area equals faster dissolving. You get more surface area when you have smaller pieces. Because in this case, you can think about it, the surface area here is everywhere that I am circling. All right can see that I am covering a lot more surface by making all of these circles versus here all I've got is this area okay temperature has an impact on rate as well as how much we can dissolve all right so this first one is showing how temperature affects of a solid solute that we can dissolve. 
So if you kind of look at here, what's, what's happening to the amount that we can dissolve, right? So this is amount dissolved. And then down here, we've got temperature. So as temperature increases, what's going on with the amount that we can dissolve? You should be noticing that as temp goes up, amount dissolved goes up. Oops. Helps if I can spell things correctly. All right. So if we make our solution warmer, we can dissolve more solute. So for example, if you hit a saturation point, you're trying to make salt water, but you know you need to get more salt in there. Heat the liquid up. It'll be able to dissolve some more. Now, think back to the last unit. How do you think the temperature is going to affect the rate of dissolving? So when temperature goes up, what happens to your molecules? If you recall from last unit, we talked about the fact that temperature is the measure of kinetic energy or how much motion your molecules have. So higher temperatures mean more motion. So if things are moving around more, what do you think might happen in terms of collisions? If you're moving around more, are you going to be more likely to collide with things or less likely? All right. So we've got a substance that is high temperature. It's got high speeds. It's going to travel more distance in less time. And then we've got low temperature with low speeds, and that's not moving around all that much. All right. So higher temperature is going to mean more collisions because you're moving around more. You're going to bump into stuff more often. So that means faster dissolving. The last thing you want to know about here is pressure affects the solubility of gases. This is another amount, not rate. All right. So if you increase the pressure of a gas that is dissolved in a solvent, then you'll actually be able to dissolve more gas. All right. So if we're, an example is whenever you drink, if you drink, soda pop, all right, there's dissolved carbon dioxide in there. You'll notice when you open up the can or open up the bottle, you hear a bunch of gas get released. And that's because the pressure inside the bottle was higher to keep the gas inside the liquid. Then as soon as you open it, the pressure releases and a bunch of that carbon dioxide leaves. All right. So be familiar with collision theory and how that impacts the rate of dissolving. Tied to that is understanding how surface area and temperature affect the rate of dissolving, and then know how temperature and pressure affect the amount of dissolving depending on the substance you're working with.